Hi everybody, how are you doing? I hope you are all well and safe and having a great day. My day's going pretty well. I've been painting in Art Rage uh, 6 and I've been uh, painting a watercolour. When I use Art Rage, I've always had an issue uh, with the watercolours. I can never get really vibrant colours. So today I decided to get to the bottom of it and uh, produce this, as you can see, it's got some pretty vibrant colours in it. I'm all out of photos. Well, I'm not all out of photos. I've still got hundreds of photos to paint, but I'm just so fed up at looking at the few photos or the hundreds of photos I've got that I've looked at so many times for ideas to paint. Uh, just can't wait to get out there and get into the Peak District and get some decent material. But I went to Pixabay and uh, typed in the search box, Peak District. And an awesome set of photos came out. And this is one of them. This is what I'm going to paint today. Um, I'll shrink that down and put it into the corner out of the way. I'm gonna start with a sketch because I thought this would be perfect absolutely perfect for a watercolour um, and I thought I'd do it in Art Rage uh, but I, I just want to say the things that really um, I wasn't I didn't like about looking at um, I don't like that let's just clear that that should be fine um, the only thing I don't like about using other pe people's photos. They're invariably taken by people that are into photography and as such are trying their hardest to, I don't like that pencil. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm gonna speak, once I've finished my initial talk, that's better. Once I've finished my initial uh, ramblings, Uh, that's in the right place yeah pretty much uh, I'm going to speed through this drawing perhaps I don't know anyway the reason I don't like let's get back to the, the, the theme the reason I don't like using other people's artwork or photographs is because they're invariably taken by enthusiastic photographers or professional photographers and they've done all the hard work for me they've created um a real pleasant scene and for me that's off the battle i like to take something that you know you're not going to um you're probably not going to paint and and, and thinks re really up to much uh, and then you turn it into something that looks like um a piece of art And that's kind of missing. I suppose here it won't be too bad because I um, I'm going to turn this into a watercolor. I've, I've completely got this wrong. <laughs> that's, uh, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to turn this into a watercolor. But in the meantime, I'm going to stop talking, speed it up, and concentrate on the drawing. Okay, I've got my drawing done. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm working with the Arsh Lines brush because I find that I can get like a nice Arsh line, but I can blend another color into it, but keep an Arsh line. And I can have fairly vibrant colors too. So, um, having said all that, um,
Having said that, uh, I can't mess around with the composition too much. I can certainly experiment with color. So let's let's uh, see what I can come up with. See if I can come up with something really vibrant. So straight away, I put in like the dullest line ever, dullest color stroke. So I'm just going to go. This isn't normally how I work with watercolors. I'm usually, I tend, if I'm doing a watercolor, it's usually fairly muted. But this time, I want to be bad and bold, man. Let's just see if we can take this. And then the other brush I want to use is the it's actually um not a brush it's a palette knife and it's the harsh chaos brush because i can get some really cool sort of effects like i've run water into this like so My dramatic hillside coming down to this bright yellow. And so this is going to be like a combination of using these brushes, the um, what was it? What was I using? I can't remember now. The Arsh Lines and the Arsh Chaos uh, palette knife and the eraser. Just to put that little oops. Just to lift out colour where I don't want it. Bad and bold. Go towards the greener side. I've never really um, managed to do a, a very vibrant watercolour in Art Rage. So this is going to be sort of a first and I'm not following sort of methods that I would paint a watercolor if I was doing a genuine watercolor you know and a, and a, a real watercolor real is that the word I guess it is I guess it's right to say that Just want to get something that looks exciting. Look that out. I'll come in with detail obviously later on. But I'm just sort of trying to get. local colour in here go with that sort of dusty for the path working really rapid don't know how long this is going to take Uh, yeah, I guess we need something fairly substantial for the trees. Maybe put some blue in there.
all very exciting. Get back to the yellow. And that in. Whew. Wow. What's going to happen here? I want, because I've gone off the edge of the page there, I want to do the same here. I want it to look balanced. That's it. Kind of a little bit of light there. That's okay. That's my first layer run. Interesting. Let's get a second layer in. Um, I think I might mess about with blend modes and change the blend mode to say multiply. And now I'm going to start thinking a little bit more carefully about what I'm going to do. Maybe Get these trees in. Obviously, that's what I'm doing. Don't think I need to tell you I was painting trees then. This, I, I have to admit, I, this is the second time I painted this today. The first time. Um, I did it in a very conventional way and I was just so disappointed with the painting at the end of it. I thought that is dreadful. It's so flat. You're not going to learn anything from it. So I deleted all the files so I couldn't go back to it. And make life easy for myself and I thought I'm right I want to think totally different about this I am not even gonna think about how I would do this conventionally I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun and experiment and at this stage I have to say it's working quite well for me put this distant Really loose brush strokes, look at that. And the misty feel about it all, I'm liking it now. What I did before, the way I went wrong, drastically wrong, was I um the initial washes were quite uh flat and muted colours. And I used uh to be honest, I used the heavy bleed brush and I couldn't get the, the depth of tone and the colour that I wanted. But as soon as I started messing around with the Arsh Lines brush, I found for the very first time I've used Art Rage, I could get uh, some really nice vibrant colours. Not right. Be a little bit careful here. Could 
could all go peak tongue at this point. And the brush a bit smaller. That's better. I need to go into the this layer and just take the eraser. And lift out sparkles in the water. Just merge into that. There we go. I quite like that. Flick a few bits of grass in there, maybe a bit darker. Yeah. Like that. Make me fence. Got a, got a stone wall coming down here as well. Got a little bit of Working for that. And we've got this fence coming out here. They're all a bit too thick, aren't they? Let's just That's it. Digging it, man. Cool. A little bit of detail on this wall. Maybe even just get the eraser. That a bit smaller, go back onto that top layer. Do the same one here, actually. Oh, it wants to be on there. A little bit like catching the top of the bridge.
think I said we need that new layer. Soften that up a bit. Just wondering now, do I need another layer? Let's create another blend mode. Let's change the blend mode to multiply again. And I just want some delicate washes. Big brush. Just put some shadows in. Coming down there, maybe in there. Together. Oh. That's going too detailed, isn't it? I don't like that at all. Let's just, uh, just sort of rub that out. I prefer that kind of looser, much looser look like we've got there. Not even sure if I like these bits of uh, grass in there now. Let's go for a sort of a lime green. I just feel like we need something sort of there. Not quite that dark. A bit lighter. There like that perhaps. Just chisel it away a little bit. Got a blending knife. Just to add that kind of path in it and then go back to that first layer actually. Um choose the eraser it's smaller. A 
put that back in it. I kind of like the, the idea of these grasses flicked in where they're just sort of highlighted. It's just sort of the, the white. And also maybe a little bit of uh, pebble work put away. Path. the tops of the stones in on that bridge might help a little bit and the odd stone oh, that's cool because that lets that blue that's on the layer above it just or below it no above it Stand out. So I can kind of do this. Put a little bit of detail on the bridge there. So lots of negative painting coming in now just to um, define some of the shapes that bridge there is quite it's in light actually isn't it let's, let's put that in and then we've got this bit comes out here like that another little bit like a little step down to the water just sort of adds a little bit to the detail of the thing which I, I don't know why I'm bothering with because it's not something I normally get excited about is it detail but today I'm feeling I'm feeling it I'm feeling Maybe a few little bits of uh, stone wall here, just catching the light a little bit in the odd place. In between those two layers, I don't want to do too much because that light wouldn't go up there that much in fact I could probably get the the brush and just put those back into shade so they're there but they're just sort of knocked into shade a little bit Right, I'm just sort of thinking about a little bit of shadow there, and there, that. What I want to do is 
too small just highlight the top of that bridge a bit like that and then a bit of some more posts kind of like that that's nice i like that i like that a lot and i'm just wondering now if this needs to just extend the sh like the shadows on those a bit Oh, kind of lost it a little bit there. I think what I need to do now is just um, think about this path a little bit. Paint that in. That's it. We're nearly there, you know. We're nearly there. path leads you into it quite nice i could just probably put some stronger color in there Just to lead you into it. I don't like the post, that there's no need for that. I think, you know, I don't think there's a lot else I can do. I can just add more docks to the bridge, maybe. Give that a little bit more impact. But where do you stop? This is the thing. So I'll put a link in the description for this photo that I got from uh, Pixabay. And I just did a search for an area that I know very well. So maybe, you know, if there's an area where you live, you could do the same. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You could, you could pick um, 
a scene. I'm liking these strong colours I'm putting in here. Uh, you could pick a scene local to you. I'm sure there'll be something on Pixabay. Be careful that you don't select. Um, they've got like a, a lot of shared links to um, Shutterstock, I think it is. And sometimes it's difficult to see which is shut, shuttles, shutter stock and uh, which is Pixabay. And if you're not careful, you could pick a, an image that um, doesn't have a sort of a, a free commercial license and you could run into uh, problems. So just be careful that make sure that you've actually got a Pixabay image if you download one. And get your images posted, your paintings posted into Digital Easel, uh, where lots of people uh, have now uh, are members of that. It, the group's building up quite nice. Um, I'm, I love to see everybody's uh, paintings in there. Just bringing this colour into the whole thing. It's not a traditional watercolour, is it? But, you know, it's been a lot of fun. I think let's merge these two layers down now. Where I can oh play merge this one down as well. See, I just want to be able to um I do like getting in the old negative. Painting zone. Uh, blue. Darker blue. tie them little uh, posts into the ground there I don't know why I'm getting bogged down with detail, but I am. I just feel it needs it. Yeah. I 
I did this so I could um, just I'm going to use um, a different eraser actually I'm going to use one that's doesn't take out all of the color and sort of vary it a bit kind of leads you into it doesn't it you know what i could go on with this forever but i think i i'm going to leave it there we'll sign it sign it with a pencil there we go so award color in art rage um getting quite bold with the color scheme. Notice I've left lots of space around the edges. Keep your detail in the center or, you know, where your focal point is, you don't have to have detail running all over the place. And I began with a, a wash of really bright color over the whole of the paper. And you can see that glowing through now. And that just made it so much easier to put the rest of the information in there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, big thumbs up as always is much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I have loads of videos like this and I would love to be sharing them all with you. So don't forget everybody, stay safe, stay sane and keep painting. And hopefully we'll be out of lockdown soon and this pandemic will be gone. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.